Hello folks and welcome to another calculator video after quite some time I might add. I have shown this machine a while, well a long while previous really and in that case I showed it with this cover off showcasing the brass pinwheel within but I never actually did cover the machine in its well proper operational state so I thought that today is the time. Now this machine right here is a uh, bit of a go-between between, between the original Odner and the Heyman Manus in that it's still a pinwheel construction but it does have some notable differences. For one when you look at an Odner pinwheel calculator it's going to rotate the actual uh, levers when you turn the crank. This is not happening on the Walter. Also they have upgraded the control mechanism. On the Odner you will see that there will be switches down here that you use to step the carriage. You will have a clearing crank here and a clearing crank over here. Now this one has optimized it so that you have the carriage shifting controls over here and you have the clearing which is just done by a single lever over here. Interestingly enough they've even added a convenience feature which is if I shift the carriage all the way taking the fact that the spring is a bit tense into account and I clear it'll reset the carriage too. And the way you use these machines are much like others in that you set the various digits using the levers. And this one comes with the added convenience of this little window up at the top where it actually shows you exactly what you have set. And then you simply turn the crank and this lever switches automatically to set which direction the counter register should be in relation to how you're turning. So as you can see right now when I make consecutive turns it's going to increment. If I flip this around it's going to decrement. A very handy feature to have when it uh, comes to division, which of course will be covered later. For now, let's clear it. And of course, they come with a built-in lever clearing, which is this white one here. This red one shall remain a mystery for the time being, but we will get to it. Next up, we have the Let's see here. Next up, just for simple addition, 1337. And you turn the crank and clear. And just add 54456. And we add. And as you can see, the last little carry there rippled out as the turn came to a close, much like on the other calculators, where the carries ripple after the main addition is done. And we clear. Simple as that. Subtraction, of course, much the same. Let's take three, 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 and add it. Clear and subtract with 3315. And you turn the handle backwards. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, as I've heard said during my myriad visits to the States. This machine does need a touch of lubricant, I think. Maybe the subject of another video. Maybe I'll just do it on my own. Who knows? 
and of course the clearing. The machine does come with a handy feature for uh, selectively clearing stuff. If you add two, five, 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 why not? And you add. And let's say I wanted to clear only the counter register. Well, that's what our dear friend Mr. Lever here is for. Turn him over to the direction you want to clear. Pull the clearing lever. He returns to the center after clearing only the selected one. Very handy. Multiplication on these machines is quite a simple affair. Let's just take 25 squared. So, as always, 25 squared is just um, 25 times 5 plus 25 times 20. So, first of all, I take 25 times 5. 3, 4, 5. And then in order to get 25 times 20, I could turn another 20 times, or I shift it to the right once, to make it so that this value represents 10 times the value previously recorded. That is to say, this is now 250. So, and I turn twice, leaving us with 25 multiplier, 25 multiplicand, or vice versa, and 625 as the result. No decimals this time. And the carriage returns upon a successful clear. The next step that we should be doing is the chain multiplication that I am rather quite so fond of doing. So I like to figure out the number of days, well, number of minutes in a year, really. And as we know, a year has 365 days, unless it's a leap year, but those don't count. And the number of hours in a day is 24. So let's figure out how many hours are there in a year. The answer, of course, is 365 times 4 plus 365 times 20, or 3650 times 2. And so this leads us to determine that there are currently 8760 hours in a single year. And then in order to engage the back transfer correctly, we push this button down here to shift the carriage, which basically just unlatches it and lets the spring do its job. And then we perform a quite ingenious feat of mechanical input validation. You see, this red guy here is the back transfer lever. When I pull this lever all the way, it couples the uh, levers to the actual results register. But, of course, I can't pull this lever without pulling the clearing lever, thereby making sure that these are all reset by the time I actually perform the back transfer, which is done using the clearing lever. Watch this. Stunning. It might look particularly simple, but I always quite do enjoy watching the back transfer in action. That being said, now we have gotten ourselves to the point where we need to multiply it by 60 to find out the number of minutes in a year. And there are a couple of ways to do this. An easy way would be to multiply it by 100 and then subtract itself times four, well, 40 leaving us with 60. So, if I simply move the carriage to the 3 position, 8760 times 100, and I press this to release the carriage one step, 
and then I subtract 40. And I have now completed this with, well, it was six turns of the crank anyway. Well, no, it was five turns of the crank, which is slightly more efficient than turning it six times because efficiency is a good way to be. And this, of course, allows us to determine that there are 525, 600 minutes in a year. But we wouldn't be done if we hadn't figured out the number of seconds. So, I simply engage the back transfer again. And voila, all set. And we do another multiplication by 60. So, 100, 90, 80, 70, 60. A squeaky old thing. And if we used our decimal indicators to delimit it in groups of three, we can easily read off the fact that it is 31,536,000 seconds in a single year. Unless, of course, it's a leap year. Finally, we get to the point of division. I usually do a division for pi. And when you're dividing, you're essentially asking yourself the simple question, what can I fit? Or what number does my divisor fit inside the dividend? So if I take 355 as my dividend and I clear this, I flip a little switch on the side to prevent the clearing from shifting the carriage and I select to only clear the revolution register and then I can simply input the divisor 113 and we can see now that we have three digits here three digits here so this plus one digit, four digits, minus three is one. So there will be one integer in our result. And then I begin subtracting until the machine says that no, it doesn't fit anymore. This is communicated through a delightful pling. And I return one and step to see how much of the fractional part I can make stick. And then I turned once too many. Not entirely uncommon for me if I get distracted, which I do easily. I'm a scatterbrained sort of creature. Nine. And then this is a two. And the last one is going to be another nine. And so we can read off that our uh, final, our quotient is 3.1415929, which are indeed the first digits in pi. Our divisor remains in the setting register at 113, and our re remainder, I should say, is 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0
which is quite a decent bit of precision, getting all of seven digits worth of decimals out of this little machine. And that's part of why these machines were so so revered in a sense, is that they did indeed simplify mathematics and brought it to the masses in a simple and convenient form. This particular machine was rebranded from Vol Walter and sold as the Moldivo in Sweden. And it was commonly used as a school machine due to the ease of use with the setting registers showing what you have set without having to read from the levers like you would do on the Odner and similar models. Of course, it also had the simple clearing, the automatic reset, the one-hand controls, which actually improve efficiency by quite a fair amount. And then there's the clearing. The Odner did have two-hand clearing, but it wasn't as convenient as just pulling this lever. And the Ordner didn't have a back transfer until a later model. That said, at the moment, it escapes me if the Ordner got it first, or if that honor belongs to the Walter. That being said, this well and truly is a calculator that James Bond would be proud of. Although I am pretty sure that this does not double as an escape vehicle, bomb, miniature laser, or otherwise. Although, of course, it would be cool if it did, but I'd prefer if it wasn't a bomb, because this does make for quite a pretty addition to my collection. Now, seeing as how we're in between Christmas on the last waning days of 2017, I would like to wish you all a very happy new year. I hope that next year we'll improve upon this one, and if this year is already perfect, then I say, lucky you, but I still wish you a better next year. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a lovely day, evening, morning, afternoon, or some other time outside of time in an eldritch fashion. Thank you, and again, please do feel free to subscribe or leave a comment or like below. I absolutely love reading the comments. It's very, uh, very encouraging. And I appreciate that you're all enjoying these videos as much. I never would have expected it when I started my channel. So thanks to all of you who comment and subscribe with regularity. You are very appreciated. Have a lovely time.